Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we're going to talk about reusing spacecraft. Now, you might have heard that SpaceX's latest mission to the space station is going to reuse something, not the first stage booster. In this case, they're going to reuse the capsule. Now, the original uh, agreement with NASA did not allow for reusable capsules, but apparently they've managed to negotiate some changes there, and the capsule is going to the space station as one which has previously flown. Now, this is, a lot of people are making a big thing of this. It's kind of the first private company to have flown orbital hardware or hardware to space and reused it. But there's a long history of hardware reuse, stuff that's gone to space more than once. And I kind of want to rewind and talk about these great moments in space reusability history. So the first spacecraft to have gone to space more than once, flown and come back, was the X-15. Now the X-15 program in the 60s, it set amazing records for altitude and height of, uh, and velocity of an aircraft. And on 13 of the flights, it actually flew above 50 miles, getting the pilots in those cases, astronaut wings, according to the US Air Force's definition. However, two of the flights, exceeded the 100 kilometer altitude limit. Both of those were flown by Joe Walker and those earned him proper astronaut wings. So the X-15 was the first spacecraft to fly to space more than once. However, that particular X-15, there were three, that one was later lost in an accident which unfortunately resulted in the destruction of the aircraft and the loss of the pilot, Michael Adams. In 1965, the Gemini program was getting going, and Gemini 2 was one of the early test missions, launching a Gemini capsule on a suborbital test to make sure that its heat shield worked. Uh, however, normally that would have been the end of the story, but the Air Force acquired this used capsule as part of their manned orbiting laboratory program. The manned or orbiting laboratory was, well, to the public face, it was a, a laboratory in space where astronauts were going to do great things to push science forward. In fact, it was an orbiting spy satellite manned by two uh, US Air Force astronauts who would be taking secret photos of Soviet assets and then returning home in their Gemini spacecraft. The spacecraft was modified for this test. They uh, needed a hatch through the heat shield, so that was installed. And of course it was the Air Force, so they painted it blue and added the Air Force emblem on the outside. This was launched in 1966 as part of another suborbital test. Interestingly enough, the capsule was on a suborbital test, but the rest of the spacecraft actually went and stayed in orbit. But that was the first space capsule to fly to space more than once. This flight was the only flight in the manned orbiting laboratory program. It was later cancelled in 1969 when smart people realised that you didn't really need crew on board a reconnaissance satellite to get good imagery. That didn't stop the Soviets from pursuing their own crewed spy satellite program. They uh, had the ALMAZ program which ran concurrently with the Salyut space stations and they wanted a new capsule to service it. So they had the Vos Vrashimie Apparat, which I'm just going to call VA. And apologies to every single Russian speaker out there because that was probably awful. So yeah, this was an alternative to uh, Soyuz and they were doing a number of test flights on Proton rockets. What's interesting to note was that they would actually fly two of these, one on top of the other. And... That meant that the top one had a launch escape system and in an emergency could fly off, whereas the second one would get stuck behind and destroyed. And this happened on at least two occasions. One while the rocket was in flight and the capsule was recovered. A second time, this happened on the ground. The capsule that fired the launch escape system, uh, the parachute failed and it was launched, lost, but the booster actually was still fine after uh, some repairs. It was later reused to launch a second pair of spacecraft. And one of these pair actually flew twice. So yeah, we had a legitimate orbital reuse of this VA capsule in uh, 1978 and 1979. So that's really the first orbital spacecraft that was reused, even though it never flew in a crude, formation, uh, crude format because, 
it just kept on having problems. So they decided to stick with Soyuz instead. But yeah, 1981, that's when the space shuttle comes along. And of course, it becomes the familiar face of reusable space travel. We have uh, Columbia, Challenger, Atlantis, Discovery and Endeavour. They all flew many missions to space, spent days, weeks, months in on orbit between their various missions, and they showed that reusable spacecraft are possible. However, they also showed that it was very expensive. Now, they carried various payloads up into orbit more than once, and yes, you could argue that bits of hardware such as MMUs flew to space multiple times, but they weren't really spacecraft in their own right that got up there. But they did make one particular interesting bit of hardware reuse possible. In 1986, the space shuttle was used to launch a satellite called Westar 6. It was actually launched as a pair of satellite with a, another Indonesian satellite, but uh, both of them were supposed to go to geostationary orbit and the kick motor failed, so it was stranded in low Earth orbit. The insurance company uh, decided to work with NASA, who was very eager to show the capabilities of the space shuttle. So they arranged a mission later that year to go up and pluck the satellites from orbit and return them to Earth. They grabbed them from orbit using the MMU, that is the large jetpacks, to grab, help maneuver these things in space. And it was actually the last mission that f those were flown on, the last time that the astronauts flew untethered for a long time before, before SAFER came. Uh, the West R6 satellite was sold off and retooled and later relaunched as AsiaSat-1 on top of a Chinese lo uh, Long March rocket. So therefore, yeah, it became another piece of space hardware which flew in space twice. And in fact, I guess it's the one that went out to geostationary orbit and therefore is the reused piece of hardware which is furthest from Earth. So the space shuttle was great, but it was also incredibly expensive. And by the mid 90s, they have the idea of the X Prize, a $10 million prize to someone that can demonstrate a low cost vehicle capable of traveling up suborbital just across the 100 kilometer Kármán line and then returning and doing this with twice within a week. We all know that in 2004, that was won by Spaceship One. It actually, the second flight was made on October 4th, which is of course uh, the, the anniversary of Sputnik. So that was a, a nice touch on their part. The Air Force also, they took what they had learned from the space shuttle. They took the bits they liked and they helped with uh, Boeing's help. They created the X-37B. There are two of those and four missions have been flown. Each X-37 has flown a uh, two missions, so that's two pieces of hardware which have both flown extended periods in orbit before returning to Earth. And that kind of brings us up to modern day. SpaceX have been talking a lot about their spacecraft reuse and recovery, but while they were still experimenting with landing, Blue Origin came along and very quickly made a number of suborbital test flights. They made four suborbital test flights in 2016 with their new Shepard vehicle. Uh, and that's all very cool, but it is just a suborbital vehicle. SpaceX, meanwhile, have demonstrated the ability to recover boosters and have indeed reused one of those boosters. And for those of you that haven't been paying attention, those boosters do in fact go up above the 100 kilometer Kármán line. Therefore, are reusable spacecraft in and off their own right. So, the Dragon Probe, the Dragon Capsule, sorry, getting reused on this forthcoming ISS supply mission, that's another part of SpaceX's strategy. They're talking about, or they're testing recovering fairings. They would like to recover the second stage at some point, but eventually uh, they're going to get the cost down a whole lot all through reuse and relaunching. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.